Hey guys, Dave here with Good Life Property Management. Today we're gonna to be talking about pet damage, uh, ways to avoid it, ways to inspect for it, and the benefits of allowing pets at your property. Hey, if you like the video, be sure to click the like button down below. Also, if you wanna see more videos from Good Life, be sure to subscribe. Here at Good Life Property Management, we love pets. We're also in a market that's very pet friendly. Uh, about half of renters in this market do have pets. So allowing pets at your property is gonna open you up to just that many more prospective tenants. Now, with the greater marketplace does come greater responsibility and possible risk. Here's four of the most common pet damage that we find upon move out. The first thing we're talking about is pet hair. This is one that's often overlooked. It's real difficult to detect at move out. Uh, unless you're highly sensitive or have uh, really keen allergies to pet dander or cat hair, this one you may not even notice until after the tenants move in and they start complaining. Usually you're gonna find pet hair along the edges of the walls where the carpet meets the baseboards. What I like to do is go in there and just take a little pinch there and whatever I pull up, I'm usually gonna find pet hair. Um, it's easy to vacuum up. Uh, most of your professional carpet cleaners will have a high performance vacuum. A lot of them even recommend using a HEPAVAC, HEPA which is a vacuum cleaner with a filter on it that it allows for smaller particulates to be trapped inside the filter, less releasing into the room and, and causing the same issue that you're there for. The second one is gonna be actual carpet damage. This one is probably the most common and the easiest to see. Generally, when you walk into a property, you can usually smell the, the pet damage already. By pet damage, I'm talking about pet urine. Um, most often caused by dogs, big and small, especially if there's been a puppy at the property. After the carpets have been cleaned, it's even more detectable because the urine that was soaked into the carpet pad has now come up through the pad and the carpet. Uh, telltale signs, you may see some darkening in some areas. Generally, it's gonna be in a circular pad and you're not gonna see you know, a square here and a rectangle there. Um, what you want to do is get down and actually get your, not your face in it, but sniff for it. You'll be able to have that telltale sign of, of pet odor and even pull the carpet back to inspect. If you're not comfortable pulling the carpet back because you're not sure if there's damage or not, have your carpet guy go out there and pull it back and reinstall it. When they do pull it out, make sure if you're not there that they take photos of it so you can charge the tenant for it afterwards. Another common area where we're finding pet damage is on doors and door frames, especially on the exterior. A lot of times people go away for the day and leave their pets outside. Uh, the pets will often claw out or bite around the door frame because they want back in or they want the attention while you guys are eating dinner. So make sure as you, you know, check out the inside of the house, you're also checking from the outside in. Patios are notorious for this. A lot of times pets are left on a small patio and they're, they get really excited and start pawing around the door frames, as you can see in the photos here. Um, also just inside too, pets do love where carpet seams are where they glue it down. There's something in that odor that, that, that dogs are drawn to and they'll dig little holes usually right underneath where the door closes if someone's leaving it in a bedroom. And one of the last things is landscape damage. Now this could be anything from burn marks from urine, it could be holes that a dog has done, dogs like to chew sprinklers, uh, dogs will also destroy fences. Uh, scratching them, knocking planks off. So this is also something you want to check after a dog has been at the property. A lot of times it's sometimes there'll be dog feces or cat feces in gardening areas. So you also want to check for that and charge the tenant appropriately. If you have any questions here at Good Life, we're always here to answer them. Uh, again, if you like what you saw today, hit the like button or hit the subscribe button and we'll see you at the next video.